Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to take a closer look at our law of sines and see some of the examples. So just a quick review. For our law of sines we have this proportionate equality where the sine of an angle over the corresponding side is equal to the side or the sine of any other angle over its corresponding side. In particular sine of A over A is equal to sine of B over B is equal to sine of C over C. So in general, when determining if the law of sines is going to be useful, the thing that we need to note is we can always use the law of sines as long as we know at least one angle and its corresponding side. So if in my three pieces of information I have angle A and side A, or angle B and side B, or angle C and side C, we will be able to solve that triangle using the law of sines. Now taking a look at our four possibilities, notice that in 1 and 2, here in um, ASA, I don't really, I'm not really given an angle and its corresponding side, but because I've given the two angles, I can find the third angle very easily by taking 180 minus the two angles I already have, and that gives me an angle and its corresponding side. In SAA, I'm given an angle and its corresponding side, and in SSA, I have an angle and its corresponding side. Now in 3 and 4, I do not have an angle and its corresponding side. And here we see I have one angle in the third case, so it's difficult for me to find the other two angles right away. So it's, I, I cannot get into a situation right away where I can use law of sines. So we see that in 1 and 2, we already have the information we need for law of sines, and that's why 3 and 4, we're going to need law, to use law of cosines later. So when you're given a problem, to identify if law of sines is possible, all you need to find out is if you have an angle and its corresponding side. Or in other words, you have an angle and you have the side opposite that angle. Now let's take it a, a, a look at a couple of examples. In this video, we're going to cover ASA and SAA. And in the next video, we're going to cover case 2, where we have SSA. So first, let's take a look at an example of ASA. Now a satellite orbiting the Earth passes directly overhead at observation towers in Phoenix and Los Angeles, 340 miles apart. At an instant when the satellite is between these two stations, its angle of elevation is simultaneously observed to be 60 degrees at Phoenix and 75 degrees at Los Angeles. How far is the satellite from Los Angeles at this instant? So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to draw out our triangle Let's go ahead and draw out a triangle here. Let's call this side A, or sorry, this angle A. We'll call this top angle B, and we'll have this over here be angle C. Now let's let angle A be Los Angeles, and angle C be coming from Phoenix. Now at this instant, we're, we observe that the satellite has an angle of elevation of 75 degrees from Los Angeles. At that same instant, the angle of elevation from Phoenix is 60 degrees. And we know that these two observation stations are 340 miles apart. Now if I want to label the rest of my triangle, this would be side little a, and this would be side little c. Now we want to keep our goal in mind here. My goal is to find the side little c. This is going to be the distance between Los Angeles and my satellite, which is up here at point B. Now the first thing I can do here, whenever we have two angles, it's very easy to find the third angle. Angle B, well, I know that my total interior angles add up to 180 degrees. Angle A is 75 degrees angle C is 60 degrees, so that means that my angle B is going to be 180 minus 75 minus 60, which is going to equal 40 degrees. So, sorry, not 40, 45 degrees. So my angle B here is 45 degrees. Now this is a good test type problem because we don't actually need a calculator for this problem, do we? These are all angles that we're very familiar with. We're not familiar with 75 degrees yet, but we don't need to be because we're not actually going to need to use angle A. We already have angle B and angle C. 
So with my law of sines, I have that sine of b over b is equal to sine of c over c. Now I can plug in the information that I have. This means that sine of 45 degrees, this is my angle B, over, now my distance of side B is 340 miles. And this is going to be equal to sine of C. We know that C is 60 degrees over my side little c. Now we're looking for side c, so I'm going to solve for c. I do that by multiplying both sides by c and then dividing both sides by 340 over sine. And you just use some cross multiplication here. It's easy to see that c is going to be equal to 340 sine of 60 degrees over sine of 45 degrees. So that's 340 sine of 60 degrees. That's the same as sine of pi over 3. So that's my root 3 over 2. Sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. I get a cancellation in my 2's here. And this is going to be 340 root 3 over root 2. Rationalizing the denominator gives me 340 root 6 over 2, or 170 root 6 miles. Now on a test problem, this would be your final answer. Or you don't have a calculator, and this is going to be the exact answer, but on homework you may be asked for an approximation. So this is an approximation. Once we plug this into our calculator, we don't have an exact answer anymore. But plugging this into our calculator gives us about 416 miles. And there we have it. The satellite at this instant, when these angles of elevation were measured, is about 416 miles from the observation station in LA. Okay, so that's a simple example of ASA, and ASA is always going to turn out to be about the same thing. Whenever we have ASA, first we solve the third angle, and then we take the most convenient pairs of angles and sides to set up our equality, so that we, the only piece of information we don't have is the piece of information that we're looking for. Now let's take a look here at another problem that is SSA. So here we're just given a diagram of a triangle and we want to solve the triangle. Now remember, whenever you're asked to solve a triangle, that means to find all pieces of information that are not given. So here that's going to be angle B, side A, and side B. So first, angle B is always going to be the easiest one to find when we have two angles. Just like in the last problem, this is 180 degrees minus the two angles we already have. So minus 20 degrees and minus 22 degrees. Again, we know this because um, we know that the interior sides of the triangle, the interior angles of the triangle, all add up to 180 degrees. So this is going to give us a difference of 138 degrees. So my angle B is 138 degrees. So that's our first piece of information. Now we just need to find the other two pieces of information, namely side A and side B. So for side A, finding A, let's take sine of 22 degrees over 80.4. Right, this is my angle sine angle of C over my side C. And this is going to be equal to sine of A, which is sine of 20 degrees over A. So that gives me my side A, after doing some cross multiplication, solving for A, getting A alone on one side, A equals 80.4 times sine of 20 degrees 
over sine of 22 degrees And plugging this into the calculator, you're going to get that this is about equal to 73.41, or just 73.4 if they only need a, ten, a tenths place in the decimal. And solving for side B, we're going to do this similarly. We'll still use sine of 22 degrees over 80.4. This is equal to sine of angle B. We found angle B to be 138 degrees over side B. Now solving for my side B, this gives me that B is equal to 80.4 times sine of 138 degrees divided by sine of 22 degrees. and plugging that into our calculator again make sure you're in degree mode for this problem that's going to give me about 143.61 alright and that's it so that's our ASA and SAA triangles using law of sines and the next video we'll look at the final case for law of sines before moving on and talking about law of cosines we'll see you there